Psalm 150. Praise God in his sanctuary, that's like in the temple or the tabernacle, praise him in his heavens. So, not for the first time in the Bible, the tabernacle is called basically heaven. And as Paul says, the tabernacle was a pattern of things in heaven. So you see this idea that actually what happens on earth is a reflection of heaven. And heaven is reflected on earth. And you come across this idea in the Bible quite often. That, <clears throat> for example, when God wants to end the life of Ahab, he says to his angels up in heaven, who is going to go and uh, kill Ahab? Well, what's your ideas? There are different ideas. And one angel says, I'll make his prophets lie to him. And God says, that's good. Off you go. And he goes and does it. So, you see, what goes on down here on earth has its reflection up in heaven and is played out up in heaven. It's why in Daniel you have the idea of princes on earth, the prince of Greece, the prince of Persia. They have their representative angels up in the court of heaven, acting out their role and God making a decision about them. And so you see another window on the degree to which man is not alone, that actually our situation is reflected up there in heaven, in the court of heaven. Just as in the church of God, in the sanctuary of God, his situation up there is reflected, should be reflected, here on earth. That's why Paul, I think, talking about women in the church, in the church meetings in Corinth, says that she should behave in a certain way because of the angels. Because we here are reflecting the situation there. So, it's a hard idea to get your head around, but it's a wonderful idea. Because it shows you that in whatever situation you're in, there's him or her here and, and him over there and them over there, and I'm here and there's this relationship and this situation going on and it's all so complex. You know what? That's all being acted out, as it were, before God in heaven with all the representative angels of all those factors and all those people playing their part. And so, again, you see, God is not ignorant. God is not afar off. God absolutely knows.